it's Haley, and I am back with another video. So, um, I last night tried out a new name for our um, Watch Me Craft um, series, and I had it as Let's Craft, but I forgot to go into YouTube and check if other people use that name or had a series under that name or whatever. <clears throat> so I checked, and there was a couple people, and one of them specifically, I've I don't know if she was part of the swap or she had commented a lot, but I've known her from somewhere and she is Pink Poodle, Pink Poodle Crafts. And so I wanted to give her credit for that. And um, I changed the name and I went through like five or six different names that I thought of and I'd check and see if that one was taken, that one was taken. And <clears throat> anyway, I found one and there was no other um, crafting things that came up in YouTube. The first couple things that came up were like music videos. But anyway, um, I'm going to call it Craft As We Go. I don't know, I just thought it was kind of had a little ring to it. So I wanted to do that. The Let's Craft name from my last video I changed and um, I wanted to give a shout out to Pink Poodle Crust. So anyway, I want to show you guys, I think I've got the cover down all right, and I am going to <clears throat> then put some lace or trim over here, and we'll do our cover, but I wanted to show you, I've got three signatures, and I wanted to show you, like, the projects that I've been working on. Um, first, I'll go through and flip through the signatures, and then you'll see the projects I did like I said, I wanted to keep it like black and white. <clears throat> um, this is a little baggy. I don't know if I'm going to do something to the edges of that. This is from that little gardening booklet. This one, and I've done something else with it, which I will show you later. Um, yeah, All three signatures have the exact same papers in the same order, um, but each project. So this is a paper sack and it's open on both ends and one side of each of the bags has a different, like each one has a different little cluster and um, they're all slightly different. This is just a little piece from that trim I got from AliExpress that's coffee dyed. I used some cheesecloth, a scrap of my old, excuse me, sheet fabric this was cut off from when I um, made the closure, okay, from the closure of our little um, sandwich bag box envelope thingy. I was just testing that out. This is <clears throat> just um, the box from a little zipper sandwich bag. I cut um, two tabs off of each end and just flattened it, and I covered it with a base paper. And yeah, so I'll be doing something more with that later. But anyway, this was a scrap, the end of it, <clears throat> and a tiny piece scrap of black fabric. And I used a regular safety pin because this one was a little bit smaller than the bulb pins. Here, I'll show you. I just felt like the bulb pin was just a tiny bit big for it. See? I don't know. I just thought it looked a little bit big on that one. So... I just used a regular safety pin. And then, let's see, I'll go ahead and flip all the, this is the real onion skin paper. You can see the watermark. <clears throat> There's the different types of doodle paper. This is the one that has the blue gray texture. This is the smooth texture cream one. And then, let's see, this is the other end of the bag. I had three brown bags. Um, I did. I don't have three of these pharmacy bags yet, but I may add them once I get another one. Um, this is the tracing paper from the small book, the tracing paper I found in my stash, and this flip out is the kind of toothy, rough cream doodle paper. All right, let's flip to the next signature and the next... Um, little booklet. All right, this one's on this side. And this is the same cheesecloth um, 
sheet scrap, black scrap, and then I used a little bit of canvas and wrapped it around the base of one of these. I think I've given away, did I give some of those away in the, one of the secret word, one of the rounds of secret word envelopes? I think I might have, but anyway, and then I glued it down and I also stapled it. So there's that one. I think that one might be my favorite. I don't know. The first one might be my favorite too. <clears throat> okay. And then this, these are like more dangly and this is just a scrap of canvas, black fabric, and then the cream sheet with cheesecloth stapled on is um, another one of these sort of leafy looking hangy down <laughs> things from the trim. So basically what I did is I took out, I, like I told you guys, I wanted the base of this, of the signatures and everything to be very neutral colors so that um, we could do different themes between each signature or even each page layout. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and we won't be stuck with one type of patterned paper or color or whatever. So I just pulled out like these three things from my little scrap thing. I had this and my plastic square thing of scraps. And I just, you know, got the neutral stuff out and yeah, kind of laid it out and played with it until I liked how it looked. So, I mean, this is not like the most intricate or anything, but I think it looks kind of cool. So anyway, that is the last one that I did in the book. And I forgot to check how many, I think. There's like 40 pages in each signature. I'll count one side. I'll just count this as a page, the bag. Fifteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So there's 16 or 32 sheets, 64 front and back per signature. So, and there are three signatures thus far. And by the time we add a bunch of stuff to it, um, I know it doesn't seem very big, but once we add a bunch of stuff, it will get big quickly. Okay, so the other thing that I did, <clears throat> I made three of these. So you guys know that I got the Bobcat book. Let me go grab it. Okay, I got this Bobcat book to make a journal for my dad. And I debound, unbound, yeah, unbound the whole thing. And I only got two pages torn, fortunately. Oh, I don't want to show this part because I was working on something. But um, there was exactly three pieces of paper, three and three. So three pieces of paper that had like non-bobcat woodland creatures. And then three pieces of paper that were just words on both sides. So the rest of the pages that I kept together in here <clears throat> all have um, images of a bobcat on at least one side of the page. So I took out those other three and I made these envelopes. Now um, decoupaging onto paper has been around forever and ever. Um, people decoupage uh, napkins usually onto the paper but I did not want any pattern or color added to it, but I wanted to strengthen it and kind of mute out the background. So I tried regular white tissue paper and it actually worked really well. So <clears throat> I did them each in a slightly different way. Um, they're all sewn down the side, but I actually did the sewing before I Mod Podged, which next time I would do it the opposite way. But anyway, and then these two, I Mod Podged the images on top of the tissue paper. This one I just kept in a square. This one I kind of fussy cut. And this one, I just used the whole sheet with the image on it as the envelope. I left a gap here because I wanted the whole little squirrel to show. So 
These are little chipmunks and squirrel envelopes that are going into our junk journal. And today, I used, these are all of the scraps left over from this. This is every single piece that is left. And what I did is I Mod Podged again, just with tissue paper. And um, <clears throat> the more you wrinkle it, or if you don't, um, if you leave it a little, like don't oversaturate it, it will create little bubbles and stuff in it and give it more texture. But anyway, so these are the two scraps and I'm going to make um, a pocket like this. And then there was this scrap and I thought this would be perfect as a tuck spot um, on the side. And I'm gonna sew it down all at once. And I think I want to put um, just a little bit of washi tape, um, kind of torn pieces on one or two spots. And that will also hold it together while I'm sewing. And I, but I can't decide if I want um, the tuck spot to be like at the bottom. I don't know. That's just, I like symmetry, but at the same time, I hate it. <laughs> I think it, I need everything to be symmetrical, but it looks cooler when it's not. So I can't decide. What do you guys think? If Do you think there should be a tuck spot here? Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and do it on this side, and of course, I'm sure I'll be making a bunch more of these in the future, so I will do the next one on the bottom. Let me grab my washi, and um, this is my little vintage washi baskety thing, and I just want to find, I don't know, this doesn't necessarily have to go in our um, journal, so it doesn't have to be neutral. <clears throat> Or maybe I'll put it in a journal in whatever color palette I will be using at that time. But I want a piece of just basic kind of patterned washi that can wrap around both sides and the image won't be like broken up. I kind of like this. What do you guys think? Because like if I did one of these, then the images would be cut off, you know? Know what I mean, Joe? Let me see, let me see. Yeah, I think that one will be good. I don't want to use this. It's too basic. All righteous. Yeah. Let's use that one. I'm going to move these out of the way so that I don't knock them into next week. All right. Now I want to have the end torn and just have a couple small pieces like in random places. I think I'll put like one a little piece right here and one right here. And then let's see. Here, here and here. Let's do that. All right. I'm going to go ahead and tear a little piece off of the end so it will be messier. Sorry, in the background, I have the movie The Dark Crystal. It's like a an old Jim Henson 80s movie. All right, let's see. Make sure it's nice and lined up. See, because I was thinking of <clears throat> initially um, sewing each piece individually so that it would also have um, trim right here and then just gluing it together, but I don't know. I think I would rather, um, you know, since it's nice and sturdy with this extra layer of tissue on both sides, I think I'm just, yeah, I'm going to leave it as is and sew it like that. Okay, so I think I'm going to center this here. Oh, like there's a lot going on over there. <clears throat> okay. <sighs> and 
And then, of course, um, I'm doing this first because I want the sewing to go over it. And it's also just going to help kind of hold these in place while I'm sewing. Because otherwise, I'd have to get, like, some clips or something. Yeah, and I don't want to do that. <clears throat> All right, let's see. On top. Yay. Or nay. I think it'll look okay once it's all sewn together and everything's all nice and lined up nicely. All right, I'm going to pause you, sew this, and I'll be right back. Okay. Actually, right now I have a cream bobbin in. I want to see if I have a black one ready. I do. I think this would look better... Yeah, I think I'm going to do black. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do it black. And I will, yeah, I'll be back. Okay. So, <clears throat> this is what I've come up with. I think I like it. What do you guys think? Should I um, add like a little half circle here? Hmm. I can't decide. Well, you guys vote in the comments about the half circle and then let me know if you actually like um, a bottom tuck spot better. And what do you think of the washi? I think it adds a little bit to it as well. Any hoozle. Okay, let me show you the last thing I did. Okay. Well, I mean, this is the last thing for this video. So... <clears throat> You guys know I got this little pamphlet booklet thing um, for free from, I think I got this for free. Anyway, I got it at the thrift store and I unbound it like usual. I took, it was just stapled and I went to the very middle and just, you know, took the staples out. <clears throat> and then I went through um, every single page and every single one that had a bug on it or an image I cut out and let me show you so I went ahead and left this taped down just for the video but I wanted to see what it would look like if I just did nothing but ran it through the copier and oh shoot oh all my little names went flying okay so I think I've got them um, I want to show you, <clears throat> so I also scanned it, and I, then I just copied it, um, you know, straight from the glass, and I also did it with and without the names. I think I used a different program for this, or maybe this is when I was running out of ink, that's why it's like blue. The images came out all right, and I think, <clears throat> oh, I wrote on the bottom, okay copy. So this one is just straight from the copier. This is with and without the names. Copy. This is through the PDF and I think this is the one I liked the best where I scanned it and saved it as a PDF. Yeah, this one says JPEG on it. This is the one I saved as a JPEG, which is, I thought, would be better quality, because that's usually what you save, like, pictures as. But, it could be, because I was running out of ink. But aside from the color, I still don't think the images are all that clear. But anyway, I wanted to test and see... <clears throat> You know, if I were to do something like this again, and then I could go in digitally and remove all of these, like erase all of these little lines and things like that, and make some fun printables just to share with people. Um, if I were to take each image individually and like add a background and tweak it and add this, then I could sell them. But um, as they are now, these 
cannot be sold because these are from a copyrighted work, obviously, and it has to be transformative for you to create a printable out of it from a book. However, so I did some pretty ex <clears throat> just to be sure, but you can go online and look at the statutes and everything yourself. Anyway, so if you buy a book, like if you were to, like I, if I buy this book, if I wanted to cut, you know, just like I did, I cut out all the images and I want to sell these specific images that I cut out of the book, not the copies, you can do that because it is a physical, you physically bought um, the product, but you do not own the idea or the artwork. So um, reproduction of it um, is, you know, the what is wrong with it. Like even if I were to like cut apart these copies and sell these, then that would be illegal. That would be like infringement on copyright. So any who's all, I just wanted to show you <clears throat> kind of my basic, 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 simple way to make a printable to reuse for yourself or your friends. But I repeat, you cannot sell these if they are a copyrighted work and they are copyrighted if they are books or works from 19 I think right now it's 1923 and after are all copyrighted works there are exceptions um like I've said like Disney and Mickey Mouse where they've gone and fought in the Supreme Court to you know extend copyright rights I guess anyway so yes if you have any books artworks artworks or images that were copyrighted from 1923 or after then you cannot um, reproduce them and sell them unless it is transformative in nature so um, just like and in video form <clears throat> like if you were to take someone's video, edit it for commentary, critique, or parody, that is all is under fair use as well for copyrighted work. Because I don't know if you knew this, but all of like all of the videos on YouTube um, are automatically copyrighted. Like if someone were to take your video as is and just download the whole thing and re-upload it, then that is um, copyrighted. <clears throat> or if someone were to take your video and to take clips out of it and do some, you know, goofy parody or whatever, or um, commentary on it, or for news purposes as well, news or, you know, whatever, then you could do that. But yeah, so there is my uneducated <laughs> synopsis of copyright legality in layman's terms or the legalities of copyright law. That didn't make sense either. <laughs> copyright law in layman's terms <laughs> for very, very, very basic things. So anyway, I think I will make some really good copies or um, I think I'll probably do the PDF and they will go out in our next secret word, which is Beetlejuice. <clears throat> the secret word is Beetlejuice. Um, and I'm going to send out some more envelopes. By the way, um, I know I didn't say it in the last video, but Veronica's envelope already went out a couple days ago. Um, Monday or Tuesday it went out. Today is Thursday. So yeah, it went out two or three days ago. So Miss Veronica, Too Sweet Crafts, your envelope is either on the way or it might have already gotten to you. But anyone in the U.S., um, if you would like an envelope of goodies from me, and I can include one of these sheets to cut apart and use in your junk journals if you'd like. Let's see, where was the best one? I feel like the PDF is the best. What do you think? This is the PDF. This is the copy. Just straight from the glass. I don't know. Any hoozle. I have one other project that I've been working on that's kind of big, not really, but I'm really excited about it, 
And yeah, I hope you all enjoyed the video and got some fun ideas. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. And um, let me know if you like the side tuck spot, if you'd rather it on the bottom. And what do you think of just all the little things I did in our junk journal. We will get back to working in it together on the craft as we go, which is our new name. Do you guys like it? Is it corny? Can't be that corny. But is it is it cheesy? I kind of like it. <clears throat> and there was no crafty videos like that that anyone else was using the name. So it will actually be our little thing. And yeah, I really like our the little bundles and things. This, I just have elastic around these to hold them together until we decide what to do. So, anywho, Beetlejuice, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye!